Hello, I'm Lee from the blog Little by Little Home, and today I'm going to share with you five essential yet simple tips to style in your living room. A living room is a place where people can gather, whether it's just your family or as extended family, friends, whoever comes into your home. And it's really fun to create a space that anybody that is there can feel welcome to just kind of cozy up, curl up, enjoy themselves, relax, and become refreshed by spending some time within your home. Recently, I gave a makeover to this space right here in our living room, and I'm gonna use it as my example to show you how to create a living room just using five simple tips. Now, if you're new here, you might not know, our home was built in 1915, and back then, they didn't have open concept. <laughs> there was, the way that the rooms were set up is not always quite functional here. Um, so it, it has been a little bit of a design challenge. Uh, it's kind of stretched my creativity, it's been fun. So our living room is set up a little bit different. Directly across from where I'm sitting is our vintage piano. If you missed the makeover of that, um, I will link that in the description below, the blog post as well as the video that went along um, of giving that a makeover. I painted it. It's a super fun color, so you can check that out. But on the other side, our living room is quite large on the other side. This is just a small area of it. And I will link a recent blog post as well as a video that's in there all about a coffee table that I've added there so you can kind of get an idea as to the layout of that side of the living room. But on this side, there was a bit of a challenge. Um, the wall right here behind me is about seven to eight feet long and there, there's windows over here, enough space for a piano, and then the rest of the living room. So I wanted to create a space that we could just sit and relax. I find my kids often sitting right here reading a book and that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm gonna take you through the process of the five different things that I have found that are key to creating a cozy living room, um, as well as creating, making a place that's functional uh, for those that are in your home. The first essential thing for your living room would be seating. Now this could comprise a large couch, a small couch, uh, different chairs, in this uh, area of our living room, I just used a love seat because the wall is not very large, couldn't fit a whole couch here. We do have on the other side a huge, uh, long, extremely comfortable couch. We splurged on that when we first moved in. It's from Pottery Barn, absolutely love it. I will link the blog post all about that in the description below, I highly recommend it. But over on this side, my budget was quite a bit smaller, but I wanted to add some seating. Again, I wanted people to be able to cozy up with a book, uh, sit here, chat with one another. So that meant um, I needed to be conservative with my budget. And I went with an Ikea Ektorp love seat. I'd never purchased an Ikea uh, sofa before. And it came in a box, we could put it together. For the price point, it really was, it was fine. And it really does work. However, if you sit on this couch and then you go over to our Pottery Barn couch, you can definitely tell that the quality is different. But again, sometimes budgets dictate, well, oftentimes for us, even <laughs> budgets dictate um, what we can spend. I give it two thumbs up for the price range. So the first thing I did was uh, add a love seat here. If you have a larger living room, you would put a larger couch, maybe you put a love seat as well, cozy chairs. Um, but the first key would, would be to add some type of seating. Also, when it comes to seating, I do wanna mention that this has a slip cover on it. Our Pottery Barn couch also has a slip cover. And I did a blog post and a YouTube video all about how to wash it. Very simple to do. It's been a great solution. It's easy to wash. And so if you're thinking about getting a slip cover, maybe check out that blog post just so you kind of know what you're getting into. But essential item number two when it comes to styling a living room is a rug. Depending upon the size of your living room, depending upon the distance of your furniture, um, would determine the size of your rug. To help determine what size you want, go ahead and measure your living room. Make sure you allow some space uh, on either side of the rug for, there to, for the floor to be exposed. A good also rule of thumb is that the front of your furniture is on the rug. Otherwise, it feels like it's floating in the middle of the room. Adding a rug to a living room really does help ground the living room. It pulls things down, and again, if you have the right size, it won't feel like it's floating, uh, but it gives the space just something to kind of pull into, and it gives it a very completed look. Now, for this space in our living room, I really <laughs> was struggling with what kind of rug to get. The first thing I wanted to do was to try to get either a round or an oval rug. I spent a lot of time looking at a lot of different sites online, keeping my eyes out when I was out shopping at stores and never found something that, first of all, that I liked, 
and also that was in my price range. My main reason for adding a round or an oval rug was to break up all of the squares and the rectangles in this space and in our living room and also to offset it to give it a different type of look than the other side of our living room. Again, I'm dealing with a house that's over 100 years old and although the house is wonderful and charming, the way to set things up does make things a little bit more difficult. So I had to give up on that idea of getting a round uh, or oval rug and settled on a rectangle rug. I spent some time looking for a rug that I would like and that would also complement the other side of our living room as well as the rest of our first floor and I couldn't find anything. However, I had a rug in our laundry room that I had pulled into this space just to test out to see if I would like a rug or I could, or a rectangle rug would look okay in this space. I ended up just taking the rug from our laundry room and putting it in here because I knew that I liked the style, I liked the colors, and I knew that it would go well with the rest of the house. So then I had to get a different rug for the laundry room, which was fine, that kind of sits off a, a little bit from the rest of the house, um, but I wanted something that was gonna go well in this space, and so I just used what I had and then just replaced that in the laundry room. Essential number three to styling your living room is furniture. I'm specifically talking about tables, whether it's a coffee table or an end table. This is where you can get fun and you can get creative. Now, I really did this again on a budget. And if you saw my coffee table video, um, I think it's a video or two back. Anyway, you can just go check that out for that. Um, but I found that on the side of the road, sanded it down, stained it and put it in. It's a completely free project to do and it really brought that side of the living room together. So what did I do here? This little table I found at like a rummage bar back in the fall. Uh, it's been sitting down in my basement, didn't quite know what I was going to do with it, and then I decided, you know what, it could be a coffee table. Technically, I think it's supposed to be a little kid's table. <laughs> you can imagine like four little chairs sitting around it. I decided to repurpose it as our coffee table. So don't look too closely because then you might be like, hmm, that doesn't really quite look like a coffee table. So I encourage you though to think outside the box. Find something that'll fit in this space and go ahead and use it. I ended up having to sand it and then I stained it and then uh, my husband James cut the legs down a little bit because it stood just a little bit too high. It isn't quite as low as a normal coffee table, but we decided just to cut a little bit off and right now we're just living with it to see if the height is too much. If it is, he can always cut some more off because you can always cut more off the legs, but you can't put it back on. So we decided to err on the side of caution with that. So that's where we got the coffee table from. So take a look around, check out yard sales, all that kind of stuff, thrift stores, see if there's some way you can do a budget type of coffee table. End tables are also a really great thing. This one is new to my home and I really love it. My mom sent me a picture right before Easter and said, would you like this a table? And I was like, absolutely. I didn't know what I was gonna use it for. At first I just said yes, because I really liked the lines of it and it was great. And then I thought a little bit more about it and I was like, ooh, I hope it fits in this space. I wasn't quite sure. We came home with it from Easter and it fits really great in this space and I needed something over here. Because before this, this space basically was a couch, like some old nightstand I had been using and a, a different lamp than this. It just, I felt like it was just like a frat house kind of, not really as gross as maybe a frat house is. And sorry to any frat boys that might be watching this. I highly doubt that's the case, but felt like, I don't know. It just felt like I hadn't really put any effort into it. So this past week I've really put effort into this space and I really love it. Okay, so let's go to the tables. It's a great place to be able to uh, put things. Now right here I have some decor on our coffee table. It can easily be moved um, aside, we take it off. Um, I often find um, our homeschool books, kids are here. The end table is a great place to be able to put lamps, which, spoiler alert, that essential is coming here soon. But find some pieces of furniture, and if it takes you some time to find that those pieces of furniture, that's fine. Just add one, and then be on the lookout for another one. Or maybe you just want to place an order somewhere online and just get it all at once and it all matches, that's fine. But don't feel like it has to match. My stuff doesn't necessarily match. The wood tones complement each other. But essential number three would be to add other furniture such as coffee tables and end tables. Essential number four when it comes to styling a living room would be lighting. You'll notice that I have two lamps here. In a regular sized room, it's recommended to have at least three, if not four different sources of light. They don't all have to be on at the same time. If, if we have a lot of company over and it's in the evening, I will turn all the lights on so there's plenty of lighting. But a lot of times in the evening, I might only have one or two lights and we are just kind of winding down and just need a little bit of light in the room to make our way through. 
Um, it's also nice to have specific lamps that uh, you can sit underneath and read and not all the lighting has to be on if you're just gonna sit in this one spot and read a book. I've been working lately on adding lighting into our living room and it really has made it feel quite cozy and I'm looking forward to this winter when we will actually have sufficient lighting. So you'll notice just in this small space, even though it's not very big, I have two sources of lighting for it. Now, if you've been around here for a little while or if you've been a blog reader for a long time, you might know that I do a lot of things on a budget. And when it comes to lamps, I was trying to do that as well. I have been looking for lamps like on Marketplace and at thrift stores for a long time. And I tell you right now, I just came up with absolutely nothing. How did I end up with these two lamps? Because if you were to look at the full price of lamps, they are really expensive. And I was dragging my feet for a long time. I said before, we just did not have sufficient lighting in here. I finally decided to spend the money. I had saved up some money and decided just to go ahead and buy some floor lamps that I know that I will like for a long time. So how did I end up with this lamp right here? It's from Target and I have the same exact lamp diagonally in our living room on the other side. To me, it felt like if I put them uh, kind of across from each other, it would pull the living room together because like I said, it's set up a bit awkwardly and a little difficult. So I wanted the space to feel like it wasn't like this space and that space. And so that helps pull it together. I found these lamps on Target, the top kind of swivels. It is the perfect reading lamp. You can put different bulbs in it if you want it to have like a lighter, you know, maybe just do a 40 watt or if you want it to be super bright, you can put a 100 watt. Although it probably has like a limit on it. Maybe don't take that advice, maybe check, <laughs> see what the manufacturer says, okay? Don't send me like information saying I blew up your house. It's a perfect lamp and I'm really glad that I took the time to invest. I could have used that money to buy a bunch of little, little things, but I decided just to save it up, buy good lighting, and I know it's something we're gonna use for a long time. This lamp over here, my mom gave to me, and I brought it home when I came home with this uh, end table. And they work great together. I had to get a lampshade for it, but this is nice to have two different light sources. Sometimes when it comes to lighting, you just need to invest in something that is brand new because the options of use aren't really out there. But put some feelers out. Ask friends and family if they have any lamps that they don't want to use. I even purchased lamps at thrift stores years back that I didn't quite like um, the coloring of it and I spray painted it. You, that's always an option as well. Just look at the lines, make sure it works. Um, and that's a great way of saving some money. But if you are having a hard time finding something and you're able to put aside a little bit of money and just make a purchase of a floor lamp, go ahead and do that. So that is a tip for essential number five when it comes to styling a living room is wall decor. It can be whatever you want. It could be painting, it could be something big, but I, adding decor to the walls, again, whether it's a painting or it's photographs or anything, really helps to pull the space in. It gives it a cozy feel. Do whatever it is that your style is. I decided to go with some black and white pictures of my kids. They're all teens now, they're all taller than me, but these are three of my favorite pictures of them from when they were little. And to get these pictures, I don't know if you guys remember, but back in the day, we had negatives. We didn't have digital pictures. I had to go through a box. I have a box probably about this big, and it weighs probably about 50 pounds. All through those negatives to find just three negatives, and I found a local shop that would uh, print them. They printed them in-house. So they did the printing of these for me and made them eight by tens in black and white. And I had found these frames at Marshall's a year ago. I have been planning this project right here on the walls for a year, and it's taken me this long to get to it. So, essential number five is to add decor to the walls. I hope those five essentials for styling living room were helpful. I do wanna encourage you that if it takes you time to do this space, that is fine. It took me a year to finally get these three pictures, to find the negatives and to get them printed and to hang them up. I had the frames sitting upstairs for a year. <laughs> I've also been on the hunt for lamps. It just really has taken the time and just in the past couple weeks, I determined I'm going to pull this space together after getting a couple of pieces that were free and investing a little bit of money in a new lamp. I was like, I'm going to get this space pulled together. And so these five things are the way to create a space that's cozy, that's inviting, that's functional, and then also is pretty. Something that reflects you and your style. Don't be afraid to possibly if you can splurge a little bit on something, um, especially something that's gonna last a long time, like a lamp, something that I could move this to another room someday, a style that you believe you're gonna like for a really long time. But also spend some time at your thrift stores, rummage barns, all that kind of stuff to see if you can find some really cheap stuff as well that you can give a makeover to. 
thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful in helping you to kind of narrow down what it is that your living room might need. If you have found some great things uh, online or through Marketplace or at thrift stores or yard sales that you've incorporated into your living room, I'd love to hear about that. Leave that in the comment section below. There is a blog post all about this uh, video in the description below as well. But thanks for stopping by and watching. Would love it if you hit that subscribe button and have a great day and see you next time.